life. I know there's God in my mama's life. I know there's God in my husband's life. I know there's God in my girl's life. You see, that faith can encourage you and you can, hey, that can get you going because that can start your faith. But God starts us off, every, each and every one of us off somewhere. Listen, James 1, 6 to 7 says, but when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from God. That means you are, hey, that means, hey, like, 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 you, you gotta, God, give me peace. You got to believe what you're asking. God, give me victory. God, give me strength. God, give me encouragement. God, help me out in this area. God, help me with my unbelief. Hey, and even this, hey, 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 you can ask God, you know what, God? I don't, hey, it's hard for me to believe. It's hard for me to understand. It's hard for me to have faith like that. It's hard for me to be encouraged. It's hard for me for this and that. You can, hey, God's simple. See, a lot of us don't think, listen. And it all starts with like, 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 I was crazy. It was like at the mission today. You know what I felt more than anything? I felt they didn't think they were good enough for God. I said, this whole room thinks they're not good enough for God. You guys think God don't love you. Because how you got treated by other people that said they were godly. You don't think God's for you because of the, of the picture they paint. A lot of godly people, they, a lot of supposed to be godly people, they, they, they dress up real good and they put their, it's like almost like a Pharisee thing. They put, they put the cloak on, they put the robe on, they got the statues, they got the things, and they're nothing but an evil person dressed up. And it's crazy, like, we, 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 if we come from like a place that, like God's never been or we come from like a family where God's never been around and, and, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, hey, our mama gets saved, or our daddy gets saved, or our brother gets saved. And then we're like, why did that happen to me? Because here's the thing. You see, it happened. Hey, each and every one of us are going to have an encounter with God. And I want to encourage each and every one of us to seek that encounter with God. Pastor, I've been serving God for five years and I could never quit smoking. I could never get off drugs. I could never do this and that. And then, and then one time I prayed and one time I asked God to help me. One time I asked God, I was serious with God. And God knew you were serious that time. God never left you when you were on meth. Did he? Did he? Nope. God never left you when you were on fentanyl. God never left you when you were wild around and, 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 and maybe maybe jumping from place to place and pillar to pillar and, and maybe out there and maybe out there on the mountain and on the mountain somewhere and not on the mountaintop. Because his word says he'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you, he's married to the backslider, he loves you. It says all those things, but it's up to us. To believe that he can give us a better life. To believe that, we're, that, that he can heal us from addiction. To believe that he can heal us from depression. To believe that we can be the man of God that we see. It's up for us to believe. Why you think he can do it for your say? You think he can do it for your daddy and not for you? You think he can do it for your mama and not for you? You can think he'd do it for your brother or not for you. Wrong. He's not a favor of man. But it's up to us. You got to believe. It's not that some of us don't believe. Some of us just don't want to serve God. Some of us ain't had enough of the world yet. Some of us ain't had too much. Hey, some of us ain't had too much. Too, hey, too, some of us ain't had too much of tall, dark, and handsome yet. <laughs> some of us ain't had enough of fast money yet. Some of us ain't overdosed enough yet. And some of us just, hey, and some of us just think we're not good enough. We believe the lie instead of the truth. Because I know who God is. And I know what God can do. And I don't care how, hey, I don't care how good you can write. I don't care how good you can read. 
I don't care how good you can spell. I don't care about any of those things. The only thing I care about is you believing in something that's supernatural and you believing in something that's, that's you believing in something that God can do that man can. You see, a lot of us go to those relationships because we need healing and because we need comfort and because we're lonely. A lot of us go to those relationships because hey, 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 we need support and, and we're hurt and that gives us a little structure or that gives us a little this and that that gives us that takes a little bit of the loneliness away a lot of us go to the alcohol because it takes the edge off a lot of us go to those things because it takes the edge off but it's still there hey why do we believe that that little fix will take it'll take it away and it, and it gets first it's man how man I had a good high for about two, two and a half hours right I was high as a kite then it goes to two hours. Then it goes to an hour and a half. Then it goes to about 20 minutes if you're lucky. Am I right? Right? 20, right? It's not even, it's not even that, it's not even that it's good anymore. It's I gotta have it. Because I'm gonna get sick if I don't. Man, if we have that mentality about God, I gotta have it. I'm gonna get sick. I'm gonna lose out. Hey, when you switch that up, and you go after God like that, everything starts moving in abundance. Because you believe, hey, do I believe, hey, do I believe he could get, hey, do I believe he gave us this building? I believe us 10 more. Do I believe this place is going to be filled up? Yep, several places. Tom, that's, that's kind of hard to believe looking at it now. Yeah, I know. I got crazy faith. I got silly faith. I got supernatural faith. You know why? Because when those things were happening, hey, and it was nothing but believing because, hey, everything, hey, every, hey, the, the pain was there. Brother Bud was dying. Sister Jerry was dying. Ryan died. After all those things, I wanted to run back to my old life so bad. There was something holding me and something cradling me, something telling me, Thomas, it ain't about you no more. It ain't about you no more. It ain't about you no more. I'm, I'm enough. Do you believe I'm enough, Thomas? Do you believe I can get you through this, Thomas? Do you believe in the message Brother Bud wrote? Do you believe in the message you were shown? Did you believe in what Sister Jerry showed you? Did you believe in what Brother Bud told? Yes. Okay, then why are you trying to run to something else? Because it hurts, God. I never said it wasn't going to hurt. I never said it wasn't going to be easy. I never said it was going to be easy. I never said it was going to be soft. I never said, he said, those that endure till the end shall be saved. It's tough. Heck yeah, it's tough. And everybody, especially when you're young, everybody wants to go party. Everybody wants to turn up. Everybody wants to live that far. Hey, I don't know how y'all do the music thing, though, because it's nothing but drilling and killing. If you, ain't, if you don't have a murder under your belt, you're not even tough. What? You got to be a certified stepper, a certified killer. And it only lasts a couple months or a year because the feds are coming. They're figuring it out. Someone's going to tell on you. That person didn't tell on you before. Let them go Kyle, get Kyle with a couple zips. Let them get Kyle with that murder weapon. And the next thing you know, you're, you're caught up. But you believe they, hey, but here's the thing, you guys, it, it's such a wild, it's such a wild, like, like I'm, I'm happy for t my, my son Thomas and I'm happy that he's not caught up in all that. He, he almost thinks it's funny. Like that, t you know, come on, dad, that ain't, that ain't God, dad. Like, he, he, like a hitter to him, like, why would you want to go kill all those people and run around with guns like that and act stupid like that? Why would he do that, Dad? Because he was misled. Because he believed the lie instead of believing in God. You see, it's our job as men of God and it's our job as women of God to show people what to believe in. And whether they catch it, it's, there, it's, it's up to them whether they catch it or not. It's up to them whether they start to believe or not because you're either going to believe in a lie or you're going to believe in the truth. 
And the lie is going to have you where? Burning a burning jack. The lie is going to have you in prison somewhere. Going, dang, I wish I would listen to my dad. Dang, I would have listened to my mama. Dang, I should have listened to my grandma. I know I did. Like, dang. And all I could hear is, mijo, Jesus loves you. It's not too late. It's not this and that. What you mean? 280 years. It's, it's, it's pretty late. What am I supposed to serve God in this place? And it, basically it was like, yeah. And you know what I mean? All I kept hearing and I got on my knees and that was because I, I believed. But the mustard seed, I was a half a mustard seed. Believe that. You see, I had to get the other part of the shell. And right when I got on my knees and right when I cried out and asked God into my life, he came into my life. I believed. Watch this. I want to go to Genesis 22, 1 through 14. And I know this is radical. This is some of the most radical stuff you will ever hear. And, and, and I don't even know if I do it. I don't know if Eck would do it. I don't know if twin would do it with Saudi. I, I don't know. I don't know if, 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 if Alan would do it with Ramil. I don't know. But I know this. I know, I know Abraham was told, get your son. Go get your son Isaac. That was a miracle baby. That, 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 what, that, that your wife had in her 80s. That was a miracle from the gump. Go get him and sacrifice him. Give him to me. I'm at the altar. What you mean? I, right then I would have been like, this man, God's crazy. Right? But right then he knew. You see, he had faith. See, and a lot of us don't understand this. He had faith that God, regardless of anything, if he had to, hey, if he had to do his son in, he had faith that God would raise him from the dead. He had faith that God would bring him back. He had faith that God would move. And there's one thing he said at the end of that. And I want everybody to pay attention because it's crazy. And some of us say, it's okay. Some of us got the, because watch, I want you to pay attention. We're, we're, we're at 22, right? And I'm going to walk you through this. And I want everybody to pay attention to this because a lot of this stuff stuck out to me when I was reading it. And this is a very powerful to just, you see, it says Abraham was tested. And a lot of us are going to be tested. You see God test? You know what the devil does? God test the devil what? What does he do? Yes. yes. The devil's the tempter and God's the tester. And each and every one of us is going to be put to a test. Are you going to put money before me? Are you going to put a relationship before me? Are you going to put this or that before me? Are you going to put a bill before me? Are you going to put your swag before me? Are you going to put your wife before me? Are you going to put your kids before me? See, that's with the, with the mama. That's, that's the hard one, right? You ain't touching my baby, right? Imagine me sneaking off trying to get worn whacked. I'll just be back. I'll go on the mountain, Rihanna. Yeah, right. I just didn't go to say. Thomas, dad's taking the sacrifice word. Dad's lost it. The God thing has got to him finally. Remember when you said he was crazy? Mom, he's going crazy again. <laughs> Something, right? But each and every one of us is going to be tested of what you put before God. And it's hard. I love my babies. But we got to understand that he's given us those babies. You don't think he loves those babies more than he loves us? The more, more than we love them? He gave us those jobs. He gave us those kicks. He gave us those things. And he giveth and he taketh away too. Remember that he giveth, but he taketh away too. Some of some time later, God tested Abraham. He said, Abraham, here I am. He replied. Then God said, take your son, your son, who you love. 
and go to the region of Mora, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain, I will show you. Wow, oh wow. He didn't, he didn't even respond. There wasn't even a response there. It just said early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of the servants and his son Isaac. I want everybody to understand that Isaac is about Kenton's age. Isaac, Isaac was about a little older than Thomas is now. And Abraham is an old man. Old. Tom, I, I, I mean, Isaac, Isaac could have whooped Abraham. You think, of, you think, you, 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 think about it. Isaac was big enough to say, Dad, get that rope off me. Dad, you're not tying me up. But he believed in the God his dad served. And Abraham's faith was contagious. Look at this. When he, when he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. And on the third day, Abraham looked and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servant, stay here with the donkey while I'm, me and the boy go over there. See, he knew there was the people. There was the two servants, right? He knew the, sever, he knew the servant's faith wasn't up there yet. The servants would have stopped him. What the heck are you doing? What do you mean you're going to kill your son? Right? What are you, you're going crazy, Abraham. Right? You see, their faith wasn't there yet. And some of our faith isn't there yet. And it's okay to be the servant too. Remember that. But as you go, you're going to grow and you're going to grow in faith. Remember that. Am I making any sense here? Look at how strong. Look at and then and then and then. Look at Stay here while the donkey, while I and the boy go over here. We will worship and then, listen to this. We will worship and then we will come back to you. He never said I. He never said God this, God that. God's going to have to make a way. He said me and the boy will be back. Right? What did he say? Look it. He said to his servant, stay here while the, with the donkey while I and the boy go over here. We will worship and then we will come back to you. He knew the whole time that he would be back and his son would be back with him. No matter how supernatural it had to get, no matter if he had to be struck by lightning, no matter if it, God had to raise him from the dead, he knew something. The only thing he had to be is obedient to God. And whatever, look at, and God was like, oh, man. Okay, like, that's crazy. My faith ain't there. Give me how, give me a quarter of Abraham's faith. Early the next morning, Abraham got up, loaded a donkey, took with him the servants and his Isaac. When he had cut him enough wood, he burnt off, he set off to the place. And God had told him about on the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He saw he said, do with the servant, stay here with the donkey while I go over here. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up. And said, the fire and the wood are here. Isaac said, for the burnt offering. You see, Abraham, Isaac's faith wasn't there yet neither, was it? See the levels of faith in this? <laughs> That's crazy. Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went together. When, he, when they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Listen to this. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Isaac let him put him on that thing, y'all. 
Isaac had faith like his pops. That's crazy, right? It's almost like some maniac stuff is going on right now, right? It's almost like some super like crazy faith. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven. Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there in the thick he saw a ram caught in by his thorns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said on that mountaintop, the Lord has provided. You see, we got to believe that God will provide the grace for us to walk in victory. We got to believe that God will provide the sacrifice for anything that we go through that, 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 that he in, in the ultimate sacrifice he's already provided, which was his son. You see, it's crazy because he put Abraham through the same thing he went through. What did God give? He gave his only begotten son, right? But there wasn't no other sacrifice. He had to be the sacrifice. And he was God in the flesh. So God gave himself in order for us to have eternal life. Right? And it's crazy like, it's crazy that he would put Abraham to the test like that. And it's crazy that, that he would tell Abraham, because you haven't withheld anything from me, that I'm going to bless you. You see, it's not that he wants us to throw our kids out of the window. <laughs> right? It's not, it's, not, it's not that he wants us to throw our kids on the freeway. It's not that he wants us to tell our wives, be quiet, I got I to gotta go handle this for God. But he wants us to make, he wants us in this message to make sure that we know that he comes first. And that we got to believe that he will provide. Even when the times get, hey, when the times get supernatural. Because here's the thing. If somebody's dying, if God wants them to be healed, they're going to be healed. One thing he doesn't want you addicted. One thing he doesn't want you depressed. One thing he doesn't want you angry. One thing he doesn't want you a, 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 a in misery. He doesn't want those things. You see, he can take those things. But what aren't you giving him that's blocking him? What's your Isaac? What, what don't you, what, 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 what do you got to, because you got to believe that when you give him something, he takes it. It comes with believing. It comes with believing. We must believe that he can, not only, not only does he save us, he didn't save you to be miserable. He didn't save you to be depressed. He didn't save you to be a drug addict. He didn't save you to be with all kinds of men, all kinds of women, and just be a, just somebody who knows God, and just somebody who believes in God, but somebody who acts like the world. He didn't save you for that. Because he wants you to sacrifice those things that keep you away from him. Right? And here's the thing, we get, it's, you know what it starts with? I'm not going to take away, it starts with believing the message. You got to believe. And one thing I do, I believe. And I believe that, 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 that this shows, like, because here's the thing, that was such a special thing to the family. Like, Isaac was born, and Isaac was born that she, Sarah wasn't even supposed to have no kids. Sarah messed around and gave him, gave him her, her maids and everything. He slept with, I think, two of the different maids. And through that, they made a Muslim religion and everything, right? <clears throat> All because of their belief. You see his belief? Sarah didn't believe that God could do it. So what happened? They made a mistake. Huh? 
Sarah didn't believe they could do it. Made a mistake. Abraham didn't make it, right? Then he lied, oh, Sarah's my sister. Remember? Abraham wasn't perfect. But Abraham believed. If you want victory in your life and you want to be a mighty man of God, you want to be a mighty woman of God, you want to be a, a, a mighty person for God, you must believe and you must believe supernaturally. He goes, because even the, hey, you believe good, even the demons do and they tremble. Because they know, Jack. <laughs> Those things that we're scared of, they tremble when it comes to the voice of God. Those drillers and those killers and all that, they tremble. Yep. That old sweet loving God. Yep, yep, yep. They sure do. Sure do. King Vaughn or any of them couldn't step one day near God. Betty's trembling right now. Betty's trembling right now. But it's such a it's such a crooked, it's it's so crooked. And it's so wild. And we believe in every other thing. But what God can do. You believe this world's getting hurt? Yeah, you believe that. Well, you believe in a little bit of the Bible then, because that's what it says. <laughs> We must believe. Brother Bud always told me this. Believe and receive or doubt and go without. And I want to encourage that today. Start believing in what you read. Start believing in what you pray. Start believing in what you say. One more time. Start believing in what you pray. Start believing in what you what you say, what, what was the other one? Pray, say, and what? Uh, there was another one in there, I think. Whatever, he got some recorded. Uh, because once you, if you don't believe in what you say, and you don't believe in what you pray, you're walking a lie. And you're really walking out the lie instead of walking out the truth. All it takes a little bit, but I bet you with that little bit, it becomes a lot. Like, dang, T, would you? Nah, I've just been through a lot. I've been down and out. It's crazy. I'm going to end it at this, you know, because my belief was like, and I believed and believed a lot when I was saved. And I don't know if Alan was there yet. But I remember, I remember we, all we had was enough for was the green van. And we saved up. We, didn't, we weren't getting no money. We didn't get the money for this building yet. The trailer park thing was still going up and down. We were all getting money for our trailers and then getting relocated. And everybody was supposed to have money, but there wasn't nothing there yet. And 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 the, the church started, and, and I and I had to get in this this thing. I had to prove. I was like, well, I don't want no money to start a church. We can do this without it, and I did. Lord did it. We were doing meetings at the shelter, and everything was going on. And then all of a sudden, the enemy was like, you ain't. All you're going to do, you're just going to ruin this like you've ruined everything. You ain't going to be a pastor. They don't believe. They just, they just, they just think you're cool and you're going to ruin everything. Da, da, da. And I started, and I was like, dang. And, I, was, and I, I grabbed this gun that I wasn't supposed to have. I grabbed all my money that I kept still in the shoebox like I still had my old weird tendencies. I didn't have a bank account yet. And I was living in the trailer, and I grabbed, I jumped in the van. I don't know if Alan was at the pool hall yet. I don't know if we met Alan yet. And I pulled up. I think it was Bill and Kay. And, and I was going to go in there. I was going to start a fight. And I, I don't know what I was going to do. I, I, was, I, was looking, I was looking for whatever. A little bit of drugs. Started, I, w I wasn't going to go home. I don't know. I was going to probably end up, you know. I was, I, I was going to get in trouble. On any, any, I had my gun on me and everything. And I walk into this pool hall. It's antiques. And I walk in there. And I look. And right at the beginning of the table, it's seven people who go to church here. And there was only like ten of us who went to church. 
time. I said, dang, God. And I went like that. And he immediately fell on me. He was like, you going to keep running or what? What you going to do with them? And I think it was like it was wanted, Pastor, what you doing here? I think they were drinking, you know what I'm saying? They were partying. I said, you guys got some room? Like, what are you doing, dude? What are you doing? I said, hey, do me a favor, though, bro. Put this gun in the van. He goes, what are you doing here? I said, everything I need to be. I said, I, said, I love you guys. I said, you all right? I said, I'm better than ever. And uh, I went home, and Brother Bud scared, like, first time I've ever seen fear on Bud's face. He's like, Thomas, you can't. I was like, I know. He's like, you scared me. I was like, I'm good now, Bud. I said, that'll have never happen again. And eight years later, it ain't happened, but I had to believe. I had to believe, and I was still believing the lie that I would never be no good. I was still believing the lie that I'm never going to make it and I'm never going to be that man of God and I'm always going to be that person that always had trouble and always in trouble and always doing time and always doing that. And right then that broke. And I don't know if you're that person that always feels that, that regardless of anything, even regardless, like you're scared when it gets too good, you run from it, you fight from it, you, you make, you sabotage it almost. Like you sabotage your own life because you're so afraid of the rejection and you're so afraid for that door to shut or you're so afraid to hear, no, it's not going to happen or no. And I was so excited. I want to be a pastor so bad. And I didn't, I didn't want to hear no. I didn't want to, because it's always been like that in my whole life. But I learned that day with God's different. And when he begins something in you, he completes it. When he starts something in you, you got you to gotta believe that he's going to complete it. And he will. That's what I want to encourage you guys today. You got to believe that he started something in you. You got to believe in the God you serve. And you got to believe that he's going to bring it to completion. And it's better than anything else that can be in this world. With that, I'm gone. I love you guys. Amen. I'm going to pray this out real quick. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just come before you.